Okay, so we're going to solve this problem where we need to find all the different combinations of 40 positive or negative integers whose sum and their product are both equal to 40. So we'll find all the different sets of 40 integers which work here, but we're not so interested in finding all the different orderings as well. So to get started on this problem, we can have a look at which of our constraints are the most restrictive here to give us a foothold on the problem. Now the fact that the sum is equal to 40, this doesn't seem to restrict us too much, but the fact that the product is equal to 40 and given that our xk's, these are all positive or negative integers. This is actually really restrictive, because this is essentially telling us that all of our numbers have to be positive or negative factors of 40. So one way of doing this is with some plus or minus 2's, where they're not necessarily all simultaneously plus or all simultaneously negative, and with a 5 here. So if we use 2, 2, 2, and 5, we get 40 as our product. So this means the rest of all of our integers have to be positive or negative ones, so I'll just write plus or minus ones here. So this is actually the most interesting way of doing this that includes the fewest ones, so here you've got four integers which aren't positive or negative ones. And then we can look at all the ways of doing this with three non-ones, so you could group together two twos to make a four, or you could group together a two and a five to make a ten, so you'll get plus or minus two, plus or minus four, plus or minus five, then lots of plus or minus ones. And your other way of doing this is with plus or minus 2, another plus or minus 2, and a plus or minus 10, and lots of positive or negative 1s. And we can do the same sort of thing, we can group them together to find all our ways of doing this with two integers that aren't positive or negative 1s, or you can just think of this as like where we've got our factor pairs, so you'll have 5 and 8 positive or negative versions of these, and lots of positive or negative 1s. You could also do this with 4 and 10, plus or minus, with lots of 1s. And we could do this with plus or minus 2, plus or minus 20, and lots of plus or minus 1s. And finally, you could also do this with 1 and 40, but then this only gives us one number which is not a 1, which is our plus or minus 40. And we've got 39 plus or minus 1s here. So what we'll do next is have a look at this constraint, the fact that the sum has got to be equal to 40, and we'll be able to use this to rule out some of these different cases. Now if we start to explore some of the different combinations, try and make the sum equal to 40, you'll see that some of them just aren't going to work. So for example, for our first combination, plus or minus 40, followed by 39 plus or minus 1s, this one isn't going to work. But there's a nice way of showing this that we'll also generalise, and we can use this approach to rule out some other combinations. If you see that the combination from plus or minus 40 is going to be even, whereas the combination from 39 positive or negative 1s if they were all positive, your contribution would be 39. If one of them was negative and the other 38 were positive, your contribution would be 37. If 37 of them were positive and there were two negative, your contribution would be 35. You can see that always your contribution from the sum of these 39 positive or negative ones is going to be odd. You can think of this each time you change the sign of one of your positive or negative ones. This adds or subtracts two from your total sum, so it's always odd. So this is a nice way of seeing that the sum these two parts is never going to be equal to 40 because it's an even number plus an odd number. So we can rule out that first case. So now for plus or minus 2 and plus or minus 20, with now we've only got 38 plus or minus 1s, you get an even contribution from your 2s and 20s. You actually now get an even contribution from having an even number of positive or negative 1s. So here we can't actually rule out this case, although that's not to say that we have actually found a solution which works. And similarly for our plus or minus 4, plus or minus 10, and 38 plus or minus 1s. There's nothing to say that we can rule this out here because I have an even contribution plus another even contribution. But if we look at 5 and 8, so plus or minus 5, plus or minus 8, we've now got an odd contribution from our 5 and 8, whereas from the 38 plus or minus 1s, we get an even contribution. So you have an odd number plus an even number, which means that the sum of these two things can never be equal to 40, so we can rule this combination out, so we can't do this with 5, 8 and 1s. If we move on now to 2, 2 and 10, so plus or minus 2, plus or minus 2 and plus or minus 10, this will give us an even contribution, but now we're down to only 37 plus or minus 1s, so the contribution from the 1s here is odd, whereas the contribution from the 2, 2 and 10 is actually even, which means that the sum can never be equal to 40, so we can rule out this possibility. If we have a look at plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 5, and 37 plus or minus 1s, you'll see that your two contributions are both odd, so there's nothing to say that we can rule this one out. So at this point I'll give this a tick, but that isn't to say that it necessarily does work. And finally if we look at our plus or minus 2, plus or minus 2, so three lots of plus or minus 2, 
with a plus or minus 5, and now we've only got 37 plus or minus 1s. The contribution from our 2s and the 5 is going to be odd, whereas the contribution from our 36 plus or minus 1s is going to be even, which means that we can rule out this possibility. Now we're ready to start actually constructing some examples which work. So we start off with our 2s and 20s. We have positive 2 and positive 20. The contribution to the sum is going to be 22 from these, which means the contribution from our plus and minus 1s needs to be 18. There's only one way of achieving this with exactly 38 plus or minus 1s. That's to take 28 positive 1s and 10 negative 1s. So here you can check your sum is going to be 40. And when we multiply these all together, the product, because we've got an even number of negatives here, the product is going to be positive 40. So this example works with 2 and 20. Let's have a look now at minus 2 and 20. So your contribution to the sum is 18, which means that our contribution from the sum of all the 1s has to be 22. Again, it's possible to achieve this. You can take 30 positive 1s, you can take 8 negative 1s. So the sum of this is going to be 40. When we calculate the product, we've now got a negative here, and an even number of negatives, so we have an odd number of negatives overall, which means that the product is actually going to be negative 40, which is no good. If we now have a look at 2 and minus 20, you'll see here that the contribution to the sum from these is minus 18. So actually, even if we took all of our remaining 38 ones to be positive, your sum would only be 20, so we're nowhere near being able to make the sum equal to 40. So unfortunately, this example doesn't work, and similarly, with minus 2 and minus 20, there's no way, even if you take all of your 1s positive, we can't make this total sum equal to 40. We're going to apply the same sort of trick here for our 4s and 10s. So if you have positive or negative 4 with minus 10 there, you'll see that the contribution to the sum is going to be negative. So even if we take all of our 1s positive, there's no way we can make the total sum equal to 40. So we can't make this work with either of these cases. If we have a look now at 4 and 10 where they're both positive, we now have a contribution to the sum of 14, so we need a contribution from our 1s to be 26. And it is possible to achieve this now, so we can take 32 positive 1s, and we take just 6 minus 1s. So you'll see the contribution to the sum, 14 plus 32 minus 6, gives us 40. And also the product, because we've got an even number of negatives here, is going to be positive 40. So we've got another example which does work here. So the only thing left to check now is what about minus 4 and positive 10? So our contribution to the sum is 6, so the only way of making this work is we need our contribution from the plus or minus 1s to be 34. And this is possible, we can take 36 positive 1s and 2 minus 1s. But unfortunately, even though the sum is equal to 40, the product is going to be negative 40 because you've got an odd number of negatives in there. So unfortunately this example doesn't work either. And now for our final case with 2, 4 and 5, we can once again rule out a few possibilities just by showing that the sum isn't going to be big enough to be equal to 40. So if you've got a minus 5 in there, whether you've got positive or negative 2s and 4s, the minus 5 means that our sum here is going to be at most 1. And if we add in 37 positive ones, we're still not up to 40. So it's not possible to make the sum equal to 40 if you've got a minus 5. So all of these cases just get ruled out there. And similarly, if you've got minus 2, minus 4, and positive 5, the sum is minus 1 there. So we can't make the total sum equal to 40 with only 37 plus or minus 1s to work with. We have a look now at 2, 4, and 5. This looks a bit more promising. So the contribution to the sum is 11, which means we need a contribution of 29 from our plus or minus 1s. And it's possible to achieve this if we take 33 positive 1s and 4 minus 1s. So your sum, 11 plus 33 minus 4, is 40, and our product is going to be positive 40, because we've got an even number of negatives in there. So this example works. If we have a look at minus 2, 4, and 5, we've got a contribution of 7 to the sum, which means we need 33 from the 1s, which means we take 35 positive 1s and 2 minus 1s. But unfortunately here we've got an odd number of negatives involved, so the total product is going to be minus 40. So unfortunately this case doesn't quite work, with minus 2, 4, and 5. And the only one left to check now is 2, minus 4, and 5. So you see the contribution to the sum from these is 3, which means that we actually need to take all 37 of our plus or minus 1s need to be positive. So you take 37 positive 1s to make the sum equal to 40. But here we've got only the 1 negative in here, so that means that the product is going to be minus 40. So unfortunately this example doesn't work either. So we're left with three possible solutions up to different reorderings as well. We've got 2, 4, 5, 33 1s and 4 minus 1s. 
we've got these two examples from earlier with our 2 and 20 and our 4 and 10. 